Okay, great. Uh, welcome to a overview of how the Pulp Ansible tests work with the functional tests primarily um, being in Pulp Ansible. Uh, the goal here is to kind of outline what we have, a little bit about you know the big goal, the goals in terms of what do we try to test, and uh, we're going to look at some tests and see how we actually um, how we actually accomplish those goals and. Uh, the, the main motivation is um, for any code, really the requirement, for any code that comes to Pulp Ansible, it needs to have a functional test that goes with it. Um, and so I want to try to unpack what we have to allow other people to run the tests, show you where they live. This top part here is a look at our agenda. Um, and then we're going to actually look at some of the tests to, to see. Um, you can. For the most part, if you're adding something to Pulp Ansible, there's probably a test already that does most of what you want. So you just end up copying that and porting it to what you need to do. Um, for the folks who are on the call, please go ahead and ask questions. Um, it's designed to help um, exchange information. And so um, if you have suggestions or questions, please jump in. Um, and if you're watching this later uh, on YouTube, go ahead and put questions uh, down below, and we'll see those as well. So. Where do tests live? Let's start with that. Uh, let me make this uh, a, little, a little bigger. So, um, so this has a bunch of links to different parts that we'll be talking through. Um, so tests live, let me make this bigger. So all the tests live in, in, inside Pulp Ansible, in the Pulp Ansible directory where all the code lives, we have the tests in there. These tests actually are, um, I believe, are even included in the shipped um, Python code. It lets you run them kind of anywhere Pulp Ansible is installed, so you don't have to install anything separate to receive the tests. Um, there's debate on whether that's a good idea or not, but that's the state of things. And uh, that's where they run. And we have a couple different areas, um, as you'll see, uh, if you look here. So there are um, assets. So assets are just um, things that we, you know, like collections for test data that we upload in various places. There aren't that many. Uh, there's also the functional tests. This is the main workhorse uh, of our test suite, and it's what we'll be primarily digging into more. Um, so these are functional tests in the sense that they assert um, functionality from a user's perspective. They they don't um, call code directly. They call Pulp Ansible's code via its APIs, which is the way that Pulp Ansible is intended to be used. Uh, then there are performance tests. And we're not going to look a whole lot at these. It's more like a toolbox than actual tests, really. Some of our other um, plugins and stuff have you know, a lot more performance tests. But really, these are the tools that um, were used and are and can be used for scale testing. So if you want to generate a massive number of collections and you want to fast load those collections into Pulp Ansible, um, and you want to create a whole bunch of repositories with collections with different overlapping sets or perform promotion, you know, copying content between repository versions. This is just a toolbox, basically, of, of things that you can do. Um, and it's primarily um, you know, it's it's primarily things that you can call via command line uh, for the most part on a Pulp Ansible installation. So the performance stuff is really, it probably should be called scale testing. So that's what's in there. Um, there are almost no unit tests. Uh, the unit test portion of the, of the suite comes from the plugin template, which kind of sets up the um, a Pulp plugin directories. And there's a place for unit tests, but we have literally almost none of them. And look, they haven't been touched in years, three years ago, five months ago. Um, uh, I'm not going to really go into the debate about whether unit tests are good or not, but um, Pulp Ansible does not have a unit test requirement. Pulp Ansible does have a functional test requirement. So that is where the unit tests live, and we don't uh, have, we have almost none of them. Uh, then there are also upgrade tests, and um, Pulp, the Pulp CI has an upgrade job that will take older versions of Pulp Ansible and upgrade them to newer ones. And uh, this is, they're pretty new. This is made in the last month. But um, there, is, there are some specific upgrade tests here. Um, these are tests that are run on top of the normal test suites. So 
um, the upgrade job more or less works like install the old version of Pulp Ansible and, pulp, and its corresponding Pulp Core version, run the test suite for both of those. So all the normal tests, the functional tests that is run, and then um, any pre-tests here, run these, and then uh, upgrade Pulp to the newer version and run the normal tests again that is the functional test, and then you can run any additional post tests here as well. So this is a little bit about the upgrade section um, that we have. So with that, uh, that's a little overview. Um, feel free to jump in with any questions there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the CI, because that's where a lot of the tests are run. Um, and here's a link to uh, the CI. Um, you'll see it's a lot of red, because um, we've had a problem with an open API schema change generator change that happened. So um, Jared's actually working on fixing that, but um, they do run nightly. And they um, and here's a look at the actions themselves. Um, I want to show you inside of one particular job. So this is just one specific job, and it's kind of down in the middle. Um, there's a couple different runs in the suite. There's, there's the pulp, which is the actual um, you know, the main test. Uh, this uses pulp with a local storage backend. There's a docs build. This just does docs stuff. There's an S3 backend. So this configures um, pulp as if you were connected and running on an object storage like S3. And it doesn't really use S3. It uses, um, I think, Minio or one of the other S3 testing um, APIs. And then there's uh, a test for generating binding. So anyways, the main one here is the pulp. Uh, the pulp test. And um, I'm pulling this up because what I want to show you is line 730. Because when I forget how to run the tests, I go look at one of the CI jobs. And you can see here that you run tests with PyTest. Um, you could also use other ones, but um, PyTest is just the project default. And um, we're just saying run, run tests and collect all of your tests from pulpansible.test.functional. So if you want to run unit tests, and the unit tests do run here, they just run further up. Um, run them. Uh, this command will run your tests. So that's a look at that. And um, we can go back and look at uh, one of the older runs that is successful. So there's a linting test. This is on a PR. Um, so there's a, there's a lint checker. And then it runs that same three. Uh, the same three jobs. And if you look at the CI run, you'll see um, in the script section, which is the main workhorse, uh, it runs the functional tests here. And you can see um, that well, there, there's a lot of skipping going on. I don't understand why that is. Um, so anyways, this is a look at the runs. Um, like I said, we're investigating our wire tests or not running correctly well right now, but that's really not the point right now. Um, so when are the tests run? Tests are run at um, pre-merge time, um, so before every PR. Uh, and also, um, they run nightly. And they're also run for every release. So the release automation that releases Pulp Ansible um, runs the tests automatically and only will push the release if they pass. So. Um, that skipping example is really not a, um, a typical one. I just want to go find one real fast here. Um, if we look, this change happened with pulp core 313. And so, um, so yeah, you can see that this actually publishes a nightly PyPy project after successful completion of the tests. And then this one in the script section should show. Yeah, so this is not showing a lot of skipping. Um, pass, 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 one skip. Um, uh, we skip the mirror galaxy test because we don't want to mirror all of galaxy with every test run. A um, couple, of, couple of skips. There are some specific conditions on them for why those are. But So anyways, this is a look at the, at the CI. Um, so tests use bindings. Um, they use bindings, and so if you want to run the pulp tests, uh, the pulp ansible tests, you would need to build those bindings and install those bindings. 
Um, we originally, when we started out, maybe, I don't know, I guess about two years ago, we kind of made the switch. Previous to that, we were just writing tests, which use like request library and stuff to make API calls more directly. But then what happens is look, people came to us after the fact and said, oh, but the bindings are broken and our integrators use the bindings, whether they're in Python or Ruby or other languages. So um, what we started to do was um, we have a goal that all of our tests use bindings. And for the most part, they do. Um, just the really old ones haven't been ported yet. Uh, we kind of port them as we touch them. We don't really, um, we haven't made an effort to go back and formally port everything. So um, you can see anywhere you see this from pulpcore.client, um, this is where bindings come from in pulp, in all the pulp plugins. So pulp ansible would be here, pulp file would be pulp file, um, co uh, pulp core would be bindings from pulp core. And, they provide um, these Python, this, these are the Python bindings. So these are Python objects. You can use this to create a, um, Ansible distributions or Ansible repositories or um, an Ansible repository sync URL or remotes, a Twitch and remote and things like that. So you have to build the bindings if you want to run the tests because the tests use the bindings. Um, any questions about anything here so far? So I assume that the bindings are generated from the open API spec, right? Yes, they are. And um, we have docs uh, on how to do uh, that um, in terms of like perform the build. But yeah, they're generated vanilla straight from, from the open API schema. So like if we go into the, um, like in the pulp Ansible docs, which I can make bigger. If we go into the client binding section, there are docs here on how to actually perform the building if you want to do this manually. Okay, and the uh, open API spec is generated automatically, right? Yes, um, the open API spec is generated at runtime, and um, this is this doc site is loading a saved version of it that was generated at build time. Okay, cool. Um, so any change, yeah, so it's great. So it's like any change you make in the API, you rebuild the bindings, and those changes will be available for you to then write a test around, more or less. Um, which, on the one hand, is cumbersome, but on the other hand, guarantees that it's right for integrators forevermore. Um, the act of building and installing the bindings is, you know, it takes those steps that I just showed in the documentation. But in our dev environment, at least, uh, we have a command that helps you do this. It's this one here. It's the p bindings command, and we're saying p bindings. That is, build some bindings, build them for Pulp Ansible. This makes the this fetches the schema that the server generates on your dev environment. Um, build me the Python ones. You could get Ruby or other ones too. So um, what I'm going to do now is switch over to actually show. Um, I'm going to show just running this. Uh, do, do, do. Um, so I have um, Pulp Ansible installed on this dev system here, which I'll make a little bigger. Um, and I just run this command, and it fetches the um, open API schema, and it uses a Docker container that comes from the upstream project, um, op uh, the open API schema generator folks. Um, and it uses their build tools to build Python bindings for Pulp and then uh, and then install them. So that's what's happening here. It does these for Pulp Core and then for Pulp Ansible because often you, you tend to need both. So so it just installed these bindings. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is um, show you how to run those tests, which um, is uh, really not much of a demo at all. I mean, you saw it running in the. Uh, in the dev environment, in the CI already, but it's it's that same command that you saw, and it collects the tests. It collected seventy seven tests, and here it's going to start working through those um, working through those tests. Uh, any questions about that so far? Let me switch back to our web content. That was the the sum of our demo. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Can you see my screen now? Yes. 
All right, great. So um, we're going to, you know, you, ins you install the bindings. We kind of went over how to do that. You definitely have to do that. Um, you also want to install the test requirements. Um, these don't get installed by default when you install Pulp Ansible. Even though the test code is there, the some of the requirements for running the tests aren't there. Um, one of them, so our test requirements break into two categories, unit tests and functional test requirements. Um, the unit tests just require mock, so there's nothing fancy really anywhere here. Um, the functional tests require these things, and you tend to get all these, at least on pulp dev environments by default, except for the Orion utils, um, which I believe, Calvin, this is something that you've created or been involved in somehow. Um, but uh, anyways, it's used in our test suite to help generate some things along the way as the test run. So you'll make sure to want to, you'll be sure to want to install those in order to um, run the tests. Otherwise, it'll fail saying, I can't import something when these uh, test code goes to run. So that kind of concludes like all the mechanics of how to run tests. Um, and what I want to go through now is actually we'll look at a few tests. Um, we have about 10 minutes left, and I think that'll be enough time. Um, so before we start looking at specific tests, the high level idea here is that um, Pulp Ansible provides integration with a few other things. And so to assert correctness on Pulp Ansible, we need to assert correctness on its ability to interact and integrate with some things. One of those things is the Ansible Galaxy CLI. So we have a section of tests that are just for the CLI. Um, we'll look at those. Uh, then there's tests that come from syncing content from external sources. Um, really the, you know, canonically well-known ones um, that particularly contain rep, um, implementations other than Pulp Ansible for their Galaxy APIs. So one of them is galaxy.ansible.com, which offers the V2. There's also V1. I'm not really covering V1, but we do have tests for V1 as well for roles and stuff like that. Um, so for V2 sync, we have tests that target galaxy.ansible.com. And then for V3, um, the only place there is a V3 implementation other than Pulp Ansible that's, um, you know, that's live out there is at cloudrightout.com. And so we have some sync tests which sync from there as well. Um, but we also have tests, um, you know, Pulp Ansible itself carries the V1, V2, and V3 implementation for the Galaxy APIs as well. And so what we need to do is, you know, it's one thing to assert correctness as we sync from, you know, an external source like galaxy.ansible.com. But it's a different thing to assert than correctness that Pulp's implementation of the Galaxy API is correct. So um, from a high level, what we do here is we actually sync from ourselves. So the, the general pattern we do this for, for the V2 and the V3 API. So the general pattern there is um, create a repository and a distribution exposing that repository and put some content into it. And then create a second repository um, and a second distribution and a remote where the remote URL is pointing at the original, the first distribution. And um, we call this a pulp to pulp sync because pulp is syncing from itself. Um, and so that's, you know, we can then make assertions that the normal sync code syncing from a third, from an external source um, can make assertions that, oh, the, the source I'm syncing from, which in this case is also pulp's implementation of that V2 or V3 API um, is, uh, you know, not erroring or is, providing an outcome where content is present or where the deprecated value is correct or you know on and on and on in terms of the assertions there so this is the high level areas of our test suite any questions about that um all right so uh i'm just going to kind of give like a drive-by tour of these areas um this is not designed to be intense or exhaustive. Um, so for the CLI test, we have three main integration points with the CLI. We support collection install, collection upload, and a role install. Um, so when you when, when you see these things, uh, so this is what, collection install? Um, we 
actually set up, um, like here's a test for example, we're going to um, create a repository and then we're going to create a remote and this happens using the bindings. And then we're going to assert that there's nothing in it. And then we're going to um, sync some data into it. And we're gonna wait for the task to finish. And then we'll read the state of the repository after there's data in it. And then we'll make a distribution. And um, all that really just serves to get us set up to have content in a repository that we can then install you know, from. So that's all really more or less set up. Um, so then what we do is we actually shell out to the CLI and make it uh, and then make assertions that it was able to um, actually install the content on disk. So this is how we are sure that we never regress um, in terms of uh, being able to deliver content. And there are, the other CLI tests work roughly the same, whether it's uploading content collections or downloading collections or installing uh, roles. So any questions about the CLI stuff? Um, then uh, let's go look at some of these syncing tests. So syncing tests do, um, so these do sync from, you know, sync test case. This does sync from Galaxy actual. You can see we're using real URLs here and we give it, um, we wanna be kind to it. So we don't run the mirroring test although we have one, it's just skips. Um, so we configure it with just syncing like one thing. And we, we have a simple collections file and we sync it and then we look at the content in the repository version and make sure it's there. We can sync it with a slash on the end. We can put some specific versions into it and assert that we just get just those. We can sync all the versions. We can attach a remote. We can, I mean, there's just a lot of sync tests here. Uh, so a lot of pulp APIs return tasks. Uh, yes. Task ideas. Is there a utility in here that allows you to wait for a task to finish before yeah. checking to make yes. sure that it worked? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, it's called monitor task and we, this uses like utility helper functions, which kind of like, um, hide that. So, um, like this create repo and sync with remote is a, is a helper function and it's in this utils area. And, you know, you can sync a repo, you can sync with remote and you'll see here that there's, um, uh, this uses another utility function. You can see here that there's this monitor task usage here. And monitor hey. task comes from uh, Pulp Smash, which is just like a general library that's shared by a lot of different Pulp plugins. So anytime you put monitor task, it basically synchronously waits. Um, so then uh, here's the V3. Um, here's some of the V3 tests. And what I want to point out is that these have skips on them because, um, and you have to set your automation hub token off in order for you to receive content, for example, from sso.redhat.com. So these don't run in our test suite by default. Um, uh, these are actually, these might run by default um, because this is available off the Red Hat um, VPN. So, you know, you, if you want to assert correctness for syncing from cloudredhat.com, this is the test you would have. And to do that, you need to set this um, environment variable with a with correct um, token auth in order for you to um, verify the sync works. Um, and I'm going to skip down to the QA automation hub token auth. So this is that same kind of test, only it's coming from, uh, where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from a URL, which is here. Yeah, um, qa.cloud.redhat.com. This is on the Red Hat VPN, so we can never run this on the CI, which runs off of the Red Hat VPN. So you can only really run this in your local dev environment. Um, and then uh, kind of just two more here, uh, which is good because we are one minute from our done time. Um, so this is a look at the same V2 test sync and the V3 ones are roughly the same pattern. 
what I want to point out here is that this sync test case, this is straight from Galaxy. So we're asserting that we're syncing correctly from Galaxy. But then there's uh, some requirements file test cases. Um, all right, maybe this is not, the, there, it's, it's in another file and just due to time, I'm just gonna show you the V3 version of it. Um, so sync collections from pulp server test case, you'll find an equivalent test for V2 as well. But in here, this is kind of what I was describing earlier. There's, it always sets up a first repo and a distribution. And then what it does is it makes a remote and it makes a second um, repository and a second um, distribution. It may not even need that second distribution actually. And it syncs from pulp itself. And so this is the way that we can use tests to assert correctness on the pulp galaxy APIs. Um, because what does it mean to be correct? Well, it means that pulp, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it means the pulp can sync from it. Um, or because other tests like the CLI are asserting that the CLI can already install from, from pulp's implementation of the Galaxy API. So um, that's all the content I had for today. I want to thank you all for your time. And um, I'm going to end the recording here. I knew how to click the buttons. All right. Um, let me know if there are any. Uh, oh, did I? Which stop recording? Stop recording. <laughs>